Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Pick up your free trial of the Currency Exchange Planner, the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the dinar community. If you decide you want the full unlocked version after you check it out, be sure to use the promo code, the denarian, and get the mobile app added onto the planner package for free in addition to the extra 20% off for all my subscribers. Start the new year off right, invest in yourself and your family's well-being today. With the currency exchange planner on your phone at exchange, you will have everything right in your hand you will need to safeguard your exchange. You will have all your serial numbers logged for each note not only for fraud prevention, but as extra peace of mind with the IRS, when they come knocking at your door. We did a video on the exchange planner it is at the top of the Denarian YouTube page. It walks you through the software, and gives you a full tour of all the benefits it has to offer. Go check it out after this video. I also recently did a video on the new Carrot Bar Savings Program, if you have not checked it out yet, now is the time to get involved so I can help you to protect your money from the pending upcoming financial crash. It's free to register and you will be ahead of everyone else as de-dollarization occurs and everyone else loses their savings. Get yourself set up today and be a part of my savings team of tomorrow. Make sure you don't lose everything in your regular bank accounts owned by the crooks at the bank that don't care about you, only making money off your money as it sits in their bank. Do you really think they just let your cash sit in a vault until you come pick it up again? One concept that people do not understand is, once you deposit your hard-earned dollars in the bank, it becomes their money, until such time that you come and want it back. The Carrot Bar program is the true future of money. It is a gold savings program that takes the blockchain technology to the next level, to protect your savings. It is literally the ultimate hedge against a market crash. You have the opportunity of a lifetime to get in on the ground floor of this program with me. Do yourself a favor and start backing your hard-earned cash with gold. The Carrot Bar program and the Currency Exchange Planner work hand-in-hand hand with each other in protecting your finances. The link to the Carrot Bar Savings Program and the Currency Exchange Planner are in the description drop down below. I encourage you, stay ahead of the rest, take the initiative and join me today on the blockchain-based card bar program and let me help you to save the smart way, in real money. In addition to the Denarian Facebook page, I am posting on the Denarian blog as well, go check it out, all the links are in the description box below this video. The blog as well as the Facebook page have all the news throughout the day. I post them there as it comes out in real time. First article of interest for today, Deputy. Sending the 2020 budget to Parliament does not require the formation of a new government. The Parliamentary Finance Committee revealed, today, Wednesday, a government parliamentary coordination to solve the problem of postponing the transmission of the federal budget for the current year by the government, and its approval quickly before Parliament. Member of the committee, Deputy Sam Alakili, told Alec Beria that the government's decisions regarding the budget related to financial matters to calm the uprising masses in Baghdad and the provinces, especially those related to returning the separated armed forces and the Ministry of Interior and other decisions that require the provision of funds, noting these decisions affected the real financial deficit in the budget, reaching more than 25 trillion dinars. She added. The government postponed sending the budget for the purpose of finding a solution to reduce the real deficit, just as sending the public budget to Parliament does not require the formation of a new government, because there is a high committee that includes ministers, parliamentarians and financial experts who have the power to send it to Parliament if it is completed by the government. Alakili stressed, the government is in the process of finding a solution to the problems in the budget through a change in the ministry's entitlements, where it will transfer the funds without any influence. Next article of interest. Economist. Iraq reserves $62 billion, 100 tons of gold, and 8 billion other currencies. The economic expert, Saleh al Hamosh, confirmed on Wednesday that the Iraqi reserves of the dollar amount to about $62 billion, 
while the reserves of gold amount to about 100 tons and nearly $8 billion from the rest of the currencies. Alhamash said to slash the information slash that Iraq has a reserve of currency and gold, which enables it to bypass the crisis in the event that Washington imposed sanctions on Iraq, provided the government adheres to some economic measures. He added that Iraq's reserves of the American currency are estimated at $62 billion, while it possesses a reserve of gold estimated at 100 tons, and Turkish, Iranian, Syrian, Jordanian and Euro currencies of approximately $8 billion. He explained that, in the event that sanctions were taken on Iraq, the government requires some quick measures that revive the economy in addition to the existing reserves through which Iraq can bypass the crisis for more than three years, noting that, the first step requires searching for another market in partnerships with Russia and China. Next article of interest. Iraq begins depositing money with China and increasing its oil exports to it. The financial advisor to the Prime Minister, Maza or Mohammad Sali, said that Iraq started working on two vital projects in the oil and energy sectors within the agreement signed with the Chinese side. Saleh said in a dialogue held in cooperation with the Iraqi Economic and Political Center that the agreement entered into force as of October 1 and since the beginning of this year, nearly half a billion dollars has been entered into the balance of the sovereign account of Iraq with China. He pointed out that these revenues result from the export of 100,000 barrels per day and will be spent to finance infrastructure projects in Iraq. The financial advisor emphasized that Iraq started work on two projects within the Chinese agreement, namely, building a project for a thermal power station in northern Baghdad with a capacity of 1,400 megawatts and a project for strategic oil storage in southern Iraq. He pointed out that the agreement with China extends for 20 years to rebuild dilapidated infrastructure in Iraq. And Saleh continued that Iraq is likely to raise its oil exports to China to 300,000 barrels per day instead of 100,000 barrels per day if he sees his interest as necessary. On September 23, Iraq and China signed eight agreements and memoranda of understanding. The agreements and memoranda of understanding included the financial, commercial, and security fields, construction, communications, culture, education and foreign affairs. In the forefront of the agreements and memoranda of understanding signed, the agreement to implement the framework agreement mechanisms between the Ministry of Finance and the Chinese credit guarantee agency Saint Shore, the agreement on economic and technical cooperation, a memorandum of understanding between the Iraqi Ministry of Finance and the Chinese Ministry of Trade on cooperation for post-war reconstruction in Iraq and a Memorandum of Understanding between the Chinese Ministry of Communications and the Office of Aeronautics and Satellites, and a Security Memorandum of Understanding between the Iraqi Ministry of Interior and Public Security in China, and a Memorandum of Understanding between the Iraqi and Chinese Foreign Ministries on two missions allocated to land Audible Masada and a Memorandum of Understanding between the Ministry of Higher Education and the Information Office of the State Council to establish a Chinese library at the University of Baghdad, and a Memorandum of Understanding the Executive Program for Cultural Cooperation, is over. Next article of interest, Deputy, Saturday's session will see the inclusion of the Alternative Budgetary Financial Management Law. Member of the Parliamentary Services Committee Abbas Oade revealed, on Wednesday, that next Saturday's session will witness the inclusion of the federal civil service and financial management laws, noting that the financial management law for the province is to spend the money until the federal budget is completed. A session on Saturday will hopefully witness the inclusion of a series of federal civil service laws and the amendment of the financial management law, Wade said in a statement to the information. He added that there are service and political bills that will be put on the agenda of the upcoming sessions to be completed before going for a legislative holiday, noting that there is a parliamentary movement to present a draft law to remove all foreign military forces from Iraqi territory. Away pointed out that the most prominent law that will be discussed is the amendment of the financial management law to continue the governorates with the disbursement of funds until the 2020 budget is approved. Ended.
Next article of interest. Sheikh Ali sends a message to Al Sadr. Deputy Fa Ik Sheikh Ali sent a message to the leader of the Sadrist movement, Muqtada Al Sadr, in which he invited him to cooperate in forming the new government. Sheikh Ali said in his message to Al Sadr, which he posted on his account in Twitter, in response to what the leader of the movement mentioned in a previous tweet, the protesters do not oppose, but rather they reject the candidates of corrupt parties, because they are against the hateful regime of quotas. He added, they want a national government. And the results of their referendums have been heard by the whole world. He continued, you have 54 deputies, and the demonstrators have 154 deputies. Let's gather them to vote on the interim government later. The leader of the Sadrist movement, Muqtada al Sadr, had demanded, earlier, to accelerate the formation of a strong and viable government that would restore Iraq prestige and independence in a period of no more than 15 days and without political, parliamentary, sectarian, or ethnic polemics. In his tweet, he called for the submission of five candidates with integrity and experience so that a final candidate be chosen to form an interim government to oversee the early elections. He said, enough recklessness from some political blocs and enough stubbornness from the demonstrators, otherwise Iraq will be lost. Next article of interest. Iraq's Sadr says crisis over, tells militias to stand down. Statement. Influential Iraqi Shia cleric Miktada al-Sadr said on Wednesday, January 8th. The crisis Iraq was experiencing is over following de-escalation rhetoric from both Iran and the U.S. and called on militia groups not to carry out attacks. A new strong Iraqi government able to protect the nation's sovereignty and independence should be formed in the next 15 days and usher in an early election, the populist cleric said in a statement, adding that Iraqis should still seek to expel foreign troops, however. I call on the Iraqi factions to be deliberate, patient, and not to start military actions, and to shut down the extremist voices of some rogue elements until all political, parliamentary and international methods have been exhausted, he said. Next article of interest. Trump, it's not the right point for U.S. to leave Iraq. President Trump said Tuesday a U.S. withdrawal from Iraq was not imminent amid the fallout of the operation that killed a top Iranian general while he was in Baghdad. Eventually we want to be able to let Iraq run its own affairs, and that's very important. So at some point we want to get out. But this isn't the right point, Trump told reporters during an Oval Office meeting with the Greek Prime Minister. Trump said an impending U.S. withdrawal would be the worst thing that could happen to Iraq, reasoning it would give Iran even more influence in the region. But he made clear he hoped the U.S. would not remain there indefinitely. Eventually they have to be able to defend themselves and take care of themselves, and it's something ultimately that I want to see, he added. We don't want to be there forever. We want to be able to get out. Trump reiterated his previous statement that he would ask the Iraqi government to repay the costs of a joint American and Iraqi air base if the U.S. is forced out of the country. He also repeated his warning that sanctions were possible if the U.S. was not treated with respect by Iraqi officials. The U.S.-Iraqi relationship has been roiled after Trump approved the strike that killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad. The operation followed unrest at the U.S. Embassy and sparked mass demonstrations. The Iraqi parliament on Sunday passed a non-binding resolution to terminate the agreement that allows for U.S. troops in the country. Further adding to the confusion, an unsigned but authentic letter from the Pentagon circulated Monday indicating the U.S. would reposition its troops in preparation for a possible withdrawal. General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, told reporters a short time after the letter surfaced that it was a draft that should not have been released. That letter is a draft, it was a mistake, it was unsigned, it should not have been released, Milley told reporters in an off-camera briefing. Poorly worded, implies withdrawal. That's not what's happening, 
Defense Secretary Mark Esper has adamantly denied that U.S. is withdrawing from Iraq, reiterating Tuesday in an interview with CNN that the letter was a draft and not an official reflection of policy. Trump told reporters on Tuesday that he had not seen the letter. He deferred to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who said that it was a mistake. The confusion surrounding U.S. troop presence in the region has led to additional scrutiny of the Trump administration's plans moving forward in the aftermath of the strike that killed Soleimani. Soleimani, the leader of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and Quds Force, oversaw Iranian proxy forces in the region and was one of the country's most prominent officials. His death has reignited tensions between Washington and Tehran and sparked concerns about a prolonged conflict. Iranian officials have vowed a response, while Trump has threatened to forcefully strike Iran if the country targets Americans or American assets over Soleimani's killing. Hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit the Denarian blog and find me on Facebook, so you get the news in real time as it breaks throughout the day. Harness the power of the currency exchange planner, the number one tool made by denarians for denarians. Use the promo code FEEDENARIAN for the additional pre-negotiated discount and the mobile app added free at no charge for all my subscribers. Get on board the blockchain gold savings carrot bar program today. You don't have to wait until you're filthy rich to get involved. It's free. And the program was made so anyone can save in gold and avoid the repercussions of the possible upcoming market crash, one of the true forms of money away from the fiat system, gold. Protect your family's wealth today. I would not recommend something I do not stand behind and believe in 110%. Did you ever hear the term, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink? The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Over and out for now. The Denarian.